Hello, I'm Carrie Bernal and this is my picture book, Fairy Magic, and it's illustrated by Laura Ellen Anderson. Once there was a girl called Isabel who lived in a house of a thousand happy sounds. Her big sister Isla loved banging the drums. Bang! Clash! Her big brother Ivan loved playing football. Goal! Her twin brother Idris loved pretending to be a purple dragon. <laughs> Isabel didn't hear many of these sounds for her world was filled with echoes and quiet. So sometimes she wore a listening headband which brought each sound dancing to her ears. Or sometimes she pointed out her thoughts with her hands. When she was with her twin brother Idris, Isabel needed no words at all as he understood her jokes perfectly. One very noisy morning, Isabel's listening headband made the world sound sharp, so she took it off and skipped into the wood of wild flowers. The calm surrounded her like a deep, soft dream. Then, beneath the sunlit silence, came the tiniest, tinkling bell. A movement so soft that not even a mouse would have noticed it. But Isabel, who was used to stillness, felt it like a flutter in her heart. There was a flicker of light. Then a fairy hovered in front of Isabel on wings of sunshine and grace. My name is Summer Blue, the fairy told her. <gasps> Isabel gasped. She could understand the fairy perfectly, not hear her, but feel her words like a gentle breeze. We must awaken the woods for summer, smiled Summer Blue, and together they touched each bluebell until Isabel's heart seemed to sing. Softly, the woods began to stir. Baby birds unfurled their wings. Butterflies took flight and a flock of fairies filled the air in a whirl of wings and wild flowers. Isabel found herself dancing to the secret song of the woods. Look what the fairies gave me! Isabel smiled at supper, tucking the flowers into her listening headband. Oh, there's no such thing as fairies! chuckled Ivan. Oh, they don't exist, cried Isla, and everyone started to laugh. Isabel ran upstairs. Idris followed her and held out his hand. Do you believe me? Isabel asked. Idris gently shook his head. The next day, Summer Blue was helping a butterfly dry its wings. None of my family believe you're real, Isabel sighed. Well, not everyone can feel our magic the way you can, smiled the fairy. And she showed Isabel something truly wonderful. Butterflies sent sound through their wings. Dragonflies can't hear at all. They use their incredible eyes. And snails find their way with their sense of smell. They're just like me, Isabel breathed, her heart fluttering with wonder. Did you know butterflies don't hear sound? Isabel beamed at supper time. Who told you that? asked Ivan. Summer Blue the fairy, Isabel said. <sighs> Fairies don't exist, sighed Isla. They do. It's just that you can't feel their thoughts, Isabel explained, because you're not used to silence. This time, nobody laughed. Every bright day, Summer Blue taught Isabel the secrets of the flowers and bugs. It 
actress began to wonder if Summer Blue was real after all. Then one morning, the air was cooler, leaves were falling and the woods were empty and still. Isabel ran back to the house. What's wrong? Her family cried. Summer Blue is gone, Isabel gasped. Ivan wrapped her in a huge hug. Isla stroked her hair. What? Perhaps she'll be back next summer, she mouthed. Idris knew what to do. He set off into the woods. Autumn sunshine surrounded him like a soft, warm cloak, and Idris stood still in the silence. There was the tiniest flutter of air, and Idris held his breath. Then a fairy appeared on wings of morning mist. Idris needed to tell his twin. He climbed the nearest tree and shook its branches. Isabel followed the trail of tumbling leaves and gave her brother a look that needed no words at all. Thank you. I'm Autumn Rose, the fairy told her, friend of Summer Blue. It's time for Summer to sleep and Autumn to awaken. Isabel took her brother's hand. Let's do it together, she smiled. And they set off happily through the silent trees. The end. And that book was called Fairy Magic. It was illustrated by Laura Ellen Anderson and it was written by me, Kerry Bunnell.